Hello and welcome to Inside PTI. Today we're gonna to talk about strip cropping. This was something that was brought to my attention and actually was a request by a grower that we test the specific agronomic principle. Now, what is strip cropping? Strip cropping actually involves going out into the same field and planting two crops and alternating blocks across the field. And when we were asked to test this, I, I asked the, the, the farmer, I, I said, why do you want us to test this, this, this concept? And he says, well, I, I think we're able to increase corn yields by being able to harvest more sunlight on the outside edges next to soybeans. So here's the concept. We're gonna plant blocks of corn right next to blocks of soybeans, alternating blocks across the field. And the outside rows of the corn are gonna have that short soybean crop next to it and they're gonna receive more sunlight. And the whole idea is drive more sunlight all the way through that canopy and try to increase corn yield. We set this, this trial up and I, I haven't tested this for probably 20 plus years. And the last time we tested this, we were looking at which direction was best to plant corn and soybeans. Is it north, south, or is it east, west? And this was before auto steer. It was before Roundup Ready crops, and it was much tougher to, to implement the system years ago. I will tell you, this was fairly easy to do this past year at PTI because, again, we've got auto steer. This is simple to make these swaths through the field, and we've got herbicide-tolerant crops. It was an increase in management style, I'll call it. You know, we really had to think about what herbicide we are gonna use, at least from a residual standpoint, because we've got corn and beans, and we wanted to use one product for both crops. So I kind of had to change my management style for that. Now, foliar, or I guess a post-herbicide treatment, I wanted the same herbicide, because get this, if I'm spraying my soybeans with a herbicide and I'm spraying the outside couple rows of the corn and that herbicide is damaging the corn, then the whole reason for me doing this corn trial is, is null and void. I'm gonna damage the corn instead of trying to get yield increase from it. So I chose a Liberty tolerant crop, okay, in, in both corn and soybeans and we put Liberty on post for our post weed control and that worked out just fine. Here you can see our blocks. We had, we had about 13 replicated blocks out in the field and these were all 40 foot. And in management technique, I guess, I, I guess I was thinking about how I manage this. Well, I still, you know, I'm growing corn. I'm gonna side dress corn. I've got a 16 row or 40 foot side dress bar. So I'm gonna make these strips 40 foot. I've also got an eight row corn head, okay? And I can make one, one full round down and back and that, that matches up to my corn, corn strips. Beans, they're 40 foot strips as well. I've got a 30 foot platform. It's not perfect, but I can make it work um, and harvest these things correctly. So I stayed with 40 foot and we went with that, that management aspect. Now again, the whole idea is those outside rows, you see those beautiful corn ears here, you know, getting those large corn ears on the outside few rows to really help drive corn yield. The question is, did we do that? And here's the yield data. And I guess to interpret this graph, think about this graph being 16 rows wide or 40 foot wide. And the center of the graph is the center of the planter. And as we drive to the outside wings of the planter, they're the outside edges of our strips, we were picking up 10 to 11% of yield on those outside rows. Now, I harvested two rows at a time to collect this data. And so you can see, you know, 10 to 11% on the outside two rows, and then we're anywhere from three to 9% as we look at the inside. But the point is, we found the wings, we were in fact getting higher corn yield. How much in, in, in bushel per acre? Up to 25.5 bushel in some areas. Now, the west wings were better than the east wings. Everything was planted north south. I haven't quite figured that one out yet, but nonetheless, a 25.5 bushel increase in corn on the outside edges. Take that yield increase times the price of corn, and guys, we're approaching $100 to the acre in improvement in revenue. This system worked. We increased yield and we drove revenue higher. The problem with it is soybeans. You know, again, we've got soybeans planted in these same 16 or 16 rows or 40 foot treatments out here in the field. And look at this picture. Do you see anything wrong with it? The question I'll ask you today is, do soybeans like sunlight too? Well, yes, obviously they do. And this is later in the day. This is late afternoon, early evening when the sun is starting to set. And look how the corn is actually shading these soybeans. 
And so this is actually a problem. And, and this, this happens twice a day. This is later in the day, as I mentioned, but early in the morning when the sun's coming up, this happens on the other side of the soybean strips as the sun's coming up. Did it hurt us yield wise with the shading effect? Yeah, it did, and it was pretty tremendous. We lost 15 bushel to the acre on the soybeans next to the corn. The middle of those 40 foot strips and beans actually were higher yielding. I, I took it on the chin with the outside wings and soybeans next to the corn. 15 bushel loss times the price of beans. I'm losing over $146 to the acre. And you can, if you remember on my corn, I made about $100, but now I'm losing $146. I gave up all of the revenue I gained in corn with the losses I had in soybeans. So how do we fix this? And some folks have, have told me how we set this trial up, we did it wrong from the get go. And I said, well, what do you mean we did it wrong? And they said, well, your strips are too wide. And I said, well, how am I gonna manage this thing? You know, I still wanna side dress and my equipment's gonna get smaller, not larger. I want, really, I want my equipment to get larger, not smaller, but in, in a scenario of stripping where we're gonna take these 40 foot strips and take them down to say six rows or eight rows, now I'm gonna have to change my operation to get it to fit these strips. So I still gotta work through this a little bit. I, I wanted to go wide, 40 foot, to demonstrate or document the yield difference from the centers of those strips to the outsides. If I would have gone narrow, six or eight rows, I couldn't have documented that. So we know where that number is at now, we know where the yield number's at, we know where the revenue is or the loss, and now we can start attacking this thing and try to fix it. How are we gonna do this thing in the future? Well, that's our tip of the day. <laughs> you know. We're getting 25.5 bushel yield increases in the corn with gains up to $95 an acre. You know, and it, it did, by the way, show up in our top 10, number five on our overall top ROI, corn strip crop planting, okay? But beans is what we're killing us here. We're losing 15 bushel and we've got economic losses of $147 an acre. It showed up in the top 10 losses on the farm, number six, by the way. How do we fix this thing? Well, I think we attack it this way. You know, next to the soybeans, that corn that we're planting, I think that's where we introduce a different hybrid. We put a short corn in that won't shade it as much. Now, I really didn't want to do that this year because if I would have put another hybrid in, I couldn't have documented the yield difference because I'm dealing with another variable, that other hybrid. So now we'll bring in a short corn on the outside edge and then we'll kind of make Christmas trees, if you will, we'll have a taller corn on the inside and a shorter corn on the outside. And then I still have to think about this, you know, reducing the width of the strips. I mean, do I go from a 40 foot to a 20 foot strip to a 15 foot strip? Get this guys, if I go to a 15 foot strip, I, I can't even get my combine in the field. You know, the way I measure a, a, you know, a six row head, my tires are gonna stick out, they're gonna run over corn. It won't even work. Well, I'm gonna have to reevaluate this. I, I get the concept by wanting to reduce the width of this as much as possible, but I still gotta get equipment in. I have to manage this thing and you know, I have to make spray applications. I have to side dress and most importantly, I'm gonna have to harvest it effectively too. So we're gonna do some, some work on this. We'll do our normal 40 foot strips and then we're gonna back them down to 20 foot strips and we'll evaluate the differences this year in 2021. Well, that's all the time we have for today. If you have any questions about anything we talked about with strip cropping of corn and soybeans, you can reach out to any Precision Planning Premier dealer or you can email us at InsidePTI at PrecisionPlanning.com. We'll see you on the next episode of Inside PTI. Thanks for watching.